Oh boys, it's here. It's December time, but there seems to be something missing. Well, what could it be? Well, no Star Wars movie. You know, usually we get a Star Wars movie, besides from Solo, every December for the past five years. So, you know, with the act of Star Wars, I went to go see Empire Strikes Back in theaters with my family, and you know what? I loved it, of course. It's an amazing movie. And I thought, hey, I'm going to rank every single Star Wars movie and TV show that is canon from the worst to the best. To start, I shall mention that everything here is an opinion. There is no fact. Except for maybe a little fun fact I'll put in here. There is no fact in Bossing Say. I should also mention that I have not seen Resistance yet. I mean, I've heard it gets somewhat good. I'll check it out in the future, I promise you. But uh, anyways, let's get on to my um, top 15, or rather only 15, Star Wars movies and TV shows that I have seen at our canon. Starting with number 15. Star Wars The Clone Wars. The movie, not the TV show. I should probably clarify that. So I remember watching this movie when I was younger and thinking it was pretty good. And now I'll say, I do not hate this movie. It's just, let's say, less good than other movies. The plot is probably the worst Star Wars plot out there. I mean, it's just rescuing baby Jabba. Oh, wow. We definitely care about baby Jabba. Uh, so good can be pretty annoying, too, I feel like. I mean, definitely she has grown, but in this movie, she can be pretty annoying. The animation is pretty sloppy at times, so because of some of these flaws, I'll have to put it pretty low, despite my fun memories of it as a child. And at number 14, we have what originally was my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. I remember watching this movie and thinking it was, like, the greatest thing ever because of all the cool action scenes, because, you know, Lil Spooder was more quantity or quality if you get what i mean now come to think of it i'm pretty sure the only reason i put the movie at the number one spot when i was of course younger was just because of the arena scene which i can sort of understand that but you know i really should think about my choices of movies more because this one hasn't really aged too well for me i mean the romance stuff is pretty annoying the plot can get a bit boring at some times don't get me wrong, it's still a great movie. I'm not saying I hate this movie, guys, like, some of you guys probably go at me and say, like, what? How dare you hate Attack of the Clones? I love that movie. I love it too, man. I do, but it's just got some problems, so I'm sorry, but I have to put this one a bit low. Also, George, buddy, I know that, you know, you're a big inspiration to me, and without you, I wouldn't be where I am with my love of film, but some of this dialogue is not the best. Sorry, but it's true. I mean, at unlucky number 13, we have Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I remember I saw this movie when I was a boy with my father and my brother, and I thought it was pretty good. But let's remember that that was young Spooter, and he's not really the most trustful person. The plot is pretty boring. I mean, seriously, what kid in 1983 was like, oh boy, I sure did love this movie, but you know what would be better? Politics. If you actually exist, please contact me. I would like to speak with you. Uh, I feel like it's totally inconsistent. And sometimes, like, sometimes you get, like, really big political speech stuff. And other times you get Jar Jar sipping in poop. Uh, funny. I feel like all the characters are except for maybe Qui-Gon, are pretty lackluster. Even Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan's my favorite character in, like, all of fiction. I feel like even he was lacking, and Anakin definitely could have used some much-needed development. I, of course, love Duel of the Fates. That scene is so good. But, yeah, because of these reasons, I'll have to put it low, like the others. Yeah, number 12, we have The Last Jedi. Now, I know a lot of you people... Are going to get angry at me like what how could you how could you put this movie above phantom menace or attack of the clones or some of you will be like what how is this movie so low i love this movie well give me a moment to explain i'll explain why i like it why i don't like it and it's sort of controversial for me like some days i'm like oh yeah this movie is really great and some days i'm like ah oh, it's really not that great so my first reason for like why i like it is i actually like Luke Skywalker in this movie. I feel like it's an interesting turn for his character. 
I always love, like, the broken hero type characters and seeing, like, how they triumph throughout their despair. It's always really interesting to me. I love the... I think like it's maybe probably the most beautiful-looking Star Wars movie out there besides probably Empire. It looks really good. Of course, some stuff like the Cantino plot is pretty annoying. I feel like it's kind of dumb. Some of the side characters are just reduced to being, like, just there for plot. Snoke... They kind of killed him off a bit early. I feel like he should have maybe stuck around for a bit more. Same with, like, Phasma. We're all feeling, you know, a great movie, but definitely could have been better. And number 11, we have Solo, A Star Wars Story. A lot of people end up boycotting this movie because they didn't like the last one I mentioned, which, bad movie. This movie was actually really fun. Solo is a fun movie. It's got a lot of fun characters, a lot of fun adventures. Sure, it does have a couple flaws, like that one weird scene that explains how Han Solo got his last name. But, you know, besides that stuff, uh, also, I was mentioning L3. She's, I don't like L3. She's annoying. But I feel like it's definitely a fun movie. I know I saw the movie with my uh, grandpa, whose favorite Star Wars character is Han Solo, and he really enjoyed it. So I think that's good enough proof that this movie is actually good. And coming at number 10, we have Star Wars Rebels. Not a lot of people tend to not like this series because it was sort of kiddish, which I agree with, but I feel like it did a good job being a Star Wars series mostly aimed for a younger audience. Had a lot of good moments. I really love the relationship between Kanan and Ezra. The Ghost Crew really does feel like a real family, and I really enjoyed that. I also love seeing characters like Ahsoka, Rex, and Maul appear. No, like, when I saw Maul in that one trailer, I just... My mind was just blown. I do have some problems, though, like the Finn lightsabers. I don't look... I don't like how those look. I also don't like how... We really get to see too much death in this show, and it sort of felt a bit too kiddish at times. But overall, i definitely say Star Wars Rebels is definitely a series worth checking out if you're a Star Wars fan, and it doesn't really deserve the hate it got. And coming at the number 9 spot, we have Star Wars The Force Awakens. Fun fact, this is probably the most fun theater experience I've ever had in my life. I saw this movie a day before it came out, and I absolutely loved it. Like, I feel like the new characters were all really interesting. Yes, even, like, Rey. I feel like she, and she was interesting. Kylo Ren, I loved his dynamic going on. I loved seeing characters like Han return the Force. I bawled my eyes out when he died. I mean, Han Solo is probably the saddest death in all of Star Wars for me, even though he's not my favorite character. He's up there, definitely. Definitely up there. Yes, it does feel like a new hope sometimes, but... It does have some differences, which I feel is a good thing. Anyways, while it may not be a perfect film, I do think Force Awakens was a very nice start back into the Star Wars franchise, and I'm glad we're getting more Star Wars because of it. Coming in at 8th place, we have the finale to the Skywalker Saga, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. I like this movie, however, I can admit it has a ton of flaws, like some of the characters were heavily underused, like Rose, Zori, Janna, Janna, however you pronounce that, I forget. I didn't like how they brought back Palpatine, I feel like that sort of ruins Anakin's character arc. I also, my biggest problem was probably Rey being a Palpatine, I feel like that sort of ruins her whole story of like, learning that you know she's a nobody but you know it's a nice message that you can still be something great when you come from nothing and now it just feels like oh you're only important because you're related to a powerful person but some things i did like was i really like the relationship between poe finn and ray i feel like it really felt like a real friendship i felt princess leia's death was handled really well i also love palpatine's movie you know i said before i didn't like him coming back by i loved Ian McDermott. He did a great job. And, you know, I feel like this movie was... Yes, it was controversial. And yes, it did have flaws. But I feel like it was a very fun movie to watch. And, you know, if anyone asked me to watch it, I'd be like, yeah, sure, man. I'm down. And number seven, we have Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. It's kind of sad that the final installment of the original trilogy was the worst of them all. Now, let me explain a few things. I mean, yes... It is still a really good movie. It is probably one of the best in the franchise. I mean, 
there's some things like you know the first part is pretty mad to me it's just some unnecessary filler stuff except for rescuing han and don't get me started on the special edition i hate that song with a passion you know the one okay enough but the rest of the movie is still amazing i love the characters yes even the ewoks i will stand by that opinion forever i love the ewoks i will stand by that my personal favorite part of this movie was the final battle between Luke and Vader in Vader's Redemption. It's too bad Red Skywalker ruined that, but overall, you know, I feel like it was a very good movie. I give it a very good score. Very, very good movie. Also, I loved the music. I mean, seriously, why haven't they released that one final battle music between Luke and Vader yet? I would buy that thing on CD in a heartbeat. Number six, we have everybody's favorite Mandalorian, except if you maybe Boba Fett or Jingle Fett guy, The Mandalorian. This is a very fun Star Wars series, and it was a very nice look into what a live action Star Wars series could look like. So why is it this low? Well, the reason why I want to put it higher, even though I feel like it's definitely one of the best things ever come out of Star Wars is I do really like the filler episode. I feel like those are kind of annoying. I'm never really a big filler guy unless it adds something to the story. But I really love the characters. Of course, you know, you gotta love Grogu. I love his relationship with Din. I think there's a nice father-son relationship. I love the action, the Star Wars mythology going on here. And you better believe I bawled my eyes out at the ending. So overall, I feel like Mandalorian is a very great series, and I hope to see more of it in the future. Hey, uh, I should also mention that I had to split this video up, so please check out part two.